Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Today, we're going to start a big series on an important topic, which is Persian New Year. Hi, Bita. Hi, Bita Jun. Today in episode number 22, we're going to kind of do an overview of the Persian New Year, also known as Nowruz. Nowruz in Farsi has great meaning. It stands for New Day. And aren't we all just ready for a new day? Absolutely. We're ready for spring to come. Yes. Yeah, so Persian New Year falls anywhere between around March 19th and 21st. It's on the very first day of spring, the spring equinox, at the exact moment of the turning of the seasons. And this year, that happens at 2.37 a.m. in the morning in our Pacific time, which is going to be on March 20th Mm -hmm. and corresponds to around 1 in the afternoon in Iran. And again, this is the solar calendar, not our Western calendar. And it's just got so much meaning and customs and traditions. And I am so excited to start the preparations. It's going to look different this year, not as big of gatherings and not all of our usual things, but I'm going to do my best to still keep it going and make it meaningful for those of us in our little nuclear family here. And so I'm excited to talk about it. We're going to do this in three parts. And again, today, we're just going to kind of do a big overview. I am so excited about Noru is like you were saying, like a new day. I think that rebirth and refreshness of the new season and of the new year is going to bring a lot of really great energy. And hopefully all of the vaccinations can get to everybody and we can move forward in this next year with good health and happiness and togetherness. And Persian New Year is so beautiful. It's actually like an almost two week festival or celebration. And in that time, you go pay respects to older people in your family and in your community. And in return, they give you gifts or give you money. We'll talk about specifics of exactly like what rituals we do on New Year's in an upcoming episode. As Bita Jun said, we were going to break this out into three segments so that we can really give enough attention to all the different topics that surround No Ruse. Almost two weeks, 13 days to be exact. So I know 13 can be perceived as an unlucky number to some people, but in Persian culture, it's actually like a celebrated number. So you celebrate for 13 days, you go visit with people, you eat special foods, you participate in a bunch of different activities, mostly around eating and also spreading love. Leading up to Nowruz, everyone gets ready for Eid. We call it Eid Nowruz. So that involves spring cleaning and just cleansing of your environment your home, deep cleaning, and get rid of everything old and be ready to embrace the newness. And also, it's a really great opportunity to kind of cleanse internally in your mind and your body and things like that, too, to really be able to embrace the new year. Yeah, it's a beautiful time to celebrate renewal. And I'm just looking out my window, and we are fortunate to be living in sunny California, but I'm looking at Mm -hmm. magnolia tree that's already in bloom. And, you know, flowers and growth and greens are a big part of it. And traditionally, it was a time to get new clothes for the new year. Mm -hmm. And again, we are fortunate in living in abundance in that, you know, it's an excuse to get a bright little spring outfit. I always got something for the girls, something bright and cheery and maybe floral. Mm -hmm. My mom would always remind me that, you know, back in Iran, it was almost like the back to school shopping. You got your shoes and your outfit and your clothes, often the one time, especially when there were lots of kids in the family. And so Mm -hmm. there's a lot of excitement. You know, you're getting ready for this big day. Yeah, I think it's good luck even to wear something new that day. Mm -hmm. When we do bring in the new year, there's like a place setting. So we've talked about how there's place settings for special occasions. Like in our wedding episode, we talked about the Sofre Art. And then for New Year, there's the Sofre Hafsin, which basically has seven elements on it and additional elements too. But it's basically a place setting that you can sit at, bring in the new year. And at that point, when the new year comes, you can exchange gifts and celebrate. 
So there's a special day as part of the getting ready for the new year. Uh Uh-huh. The lead up. The lead up. Yes. It's a special Wednesday. The ritual starts on the last Wednesday before the vernal equinox. In Farsi, that's called Chahar Shan Besuri. Yes. And that's literally translated as Red Wednesday. And on this evening, it's a really fun fire ceremony where you jump over bonfires. Now, I didn't experience this firsthand, so I'd love for you to explain it. If you can believe it, I've never jumped over a bonfire. What? <laughs> You've never participated in Charsham Basuri? I never have, but I have heard about it from so many people telling the tales of how fun it is. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. It just being like a hot, playful night. It's supposed to be a cleansing ceremony. You know, it gives you feelings of happiness and health and joy. And there's like a saying that's sad. Uh Uh-huh. And you kind of chant this basically as you're jumping over the fire and you're negotiating with the bonfire that's like, take away my like sickly parlor, take away my sickness and give me your bright glow. So take away my sickness and give me your heat and energy. The Festival of Light and Fire, I think it's also translated to as Charsham Basuri. The tradition is that you jump over three different little fires and sing, Dorieto Azman, Zardia Man Asto. We would do that growing up. I do that now. And, you know, we live in a city, so we can't necessarily like build bonfires, but we'll even sometimes just have little clusters of candles lit and just jump over of that either inside, obviously being safe, jump over these little bundles of candles. But every year in Berkeley, California, they would have like a huge Charsha Masuri party. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen this year. And it didn't happen last year because it was just right at the beginning of the pandemic. But I have a little video of that I was actually jumping over the fire with my little daughter in my arms. And it's so fun. Everyone is out there. They have little stands selling like kebabs and foods and things like that. And it's, it's a really great opportunity for people to come out and kind of experience the bringing of the new year. I've heard about that one in Berkeley. That's like the big one in the East Bay. And then some of the local popular Middle Eastern markets would do it in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. I think I could handle the candle. I think I could maybe handle doing that. We can't talk about Charsham Basuri and the Wednesday without bringing up Persian trail mix. Yes, Ajil. It's the world's easiest recipe because it's just mixing a combination of a variety of nuts and dried fruits. Mm -hmm. You can put whatever is your pleasure, but traditionally there's some kind of cool, interesting, unique things in there. Dried mulberries. Mm, Toot. I love toot. Toot. I do too. So it's usually a big, beautiful platter or a bowl. Uh And it's enjoyed at this time of year. And also the other one is our winter solstice celebration that we talked about. Yalda. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. I love the earthy, celestial meanings and times that we have holidays in the culture. And they're non-religious. They're just going with the solar calendar, which is so neat. Winter solstice, Yalda, and spring equinox, Persian New Year, are two times that this Persian trail mix makes a special appearance. It's always prevalent, but especially kind of traditionally comes out at those two times as well. Mm -hmm. But the unique Ingredients definitely include tooch, dried mulberries, mm-hmm. often has dried figs, and just a combination of bountiful, healthy, protein-filled, fiber-rich nuts like almonds, pistachios, hazelnuts, walnuts, cashews. Mm-hmm. And I really like dried cherries. I know that's not a traditional one, but I love dried cherries. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite combination of how to make your Persian trail mix? I love having golden raisins in there and just with like the variety of nuts. Really, you can make ajil with whatever you have. Nohod, dried chickpeas are always a fun little crunchy thing in there. But yeah, I definitely would pick out the toots because I'm like a big toots fan. (laughs) And also pistachios are delicious in the ajil trail mix. And I know these events that we're talking about are not religious, but at some religious events, they'll have ajil wrapped up in little bits of lace with a little bow on it. And then it's passed around. If you have a wish that comes true, you can spread the love with giving people little bundles of ajil. And then if you have a wish, you can eat it with that intention of like getting your wish fulfilled. Very sweet. And that would be maybe a COVID safe way of sharing to have little individualized portions. Yeah. Tie it up and share it with my neighbors. Yeah. There's all sorts of versions of Persian trail mix. It's so delicious. 
Yeah, I love it. It's so beautiful and so delicious and energizing. One thing that we can do in preparation for no roos for that beautiful table place setting that we were talking about is to start growing sabze. I'm so glad you brought up sabze because you have to start growing it if you're going to do it yourself at least two weeks before Mm -hmm. the actual New Year day that we said is on March 20th this year. And it could be any variety of legume or bean that's growing. It could be lentils. It could be wheat. It could be mung beans. Yeah, it turns into like a little like grass. So sometimes if you don't want to grow it yourself, you could go get like kitty grass. Yes, I cheat. (laughs) I either wait for the grandma to give me the extra one that she grew or I'll go down to the produce market and get a square of wheatgrass that's tall and beautiful. But that's so cute that you brought up catnip. Exactly. (laughs) Cat grass. Any kind of grass will do. (laughs) What you can do also is actually grow it. Have you ever grown it yourself before? I have. Yeah. Not always successfully. Yeah. There's a whole art and science behind it. You have to be on it, not overwater it, remember to water it, use the spray bottle. Have you done it? I've done it one time. And I basically followed the instructions that Nas Devarian, the author of Bottom of the Pot Cookbook, she every year on her Instagram teaches people how to make sabze. So I saw her do it before. And then one year I was like, I'm going to try to do it. And I was actually really proud of myself for doing it because I think the fail rate is pretty high. But I was pretty excited to do that. So I'm sure she's going to do it again this year. So if you follow her on Instagram, she basically walks you through it. Essentially, you have to soak the lentils or whatever bean you're going to use for a certain number of days and then they start to sprout and then you put it into like a shallow dish or a plate cover it with a wet towel for a few days and then you have to like spritz it with water until it starts growing so there's a bunch of steps so I would recommend if anyone does want to do it to follow Nas's instructions on that oh maybe I'll try So that's something that people can start working on before New Year's, in addition to cleaning their house and getting all their new clothes and getting their fresh money for AD. Yeah, absolutely. We have time, so why not? It's a big central part of the half scene spread. Mm -hmm. So let's do our best to either grow it or inherit one and a big green growth of health and renew. Yeah. So what's our Ask the Beats today? Our Ask the Beats today comes from one of our focus groups. And the question is how to make a rich Persian dish healthier. As a nutritionist here, I think that you can definitely teach us. I have a few things that I would probably think of just in general, like using less oil and not frying as much. But tell us what we can do to make these beautiful dishes that typically take a lot of fats. Mm -hmm. What can we do to make that healthier? What a great question. That's kind of, you covered it. You just basically cut down on oil and fats, pick lean meats if you're going to use meats, Mm -hmm. try to cut down on the deep fry. You know, we've talked about strategies of doing that. For example, when you're going to make the crispy bottom of the pot Mm tarig, you can use a little bit less oil if you have a good Teflon or nonstick pot. You can do things with an air fryer. I use my air fryer a lot to cut down on having to use oil. Other than that, you know, Persian food is just healthy. So there are rich dishes, but there isn't a ton to change. I mean, we don't really have like cheesy dishes to worry about those type of fats. So overall, it's very rich in plants and nutrients and vitamins. And other than cutting down frying, I'd say we're in good shape. Yeah, I think you can also bake things. So like the cuckoo we've talked about before, which is like a spinach or different vegetable frittata type of dish, instead of pan frying that, which takes a lot of oil, you can actually bake that and use just a fraction of the oil to make that healthier. And to your point about, you know, if you decide to include meat, because so many of the dishes, the stews and the different rice dishes, you don't even have to have meat in it if you don't want to, if you want to have it vegetarian or vegan. Definitely. Yeah, perfect example is the cuckoo. Cuckoo is usually fried in a ton of oil, Mm -hmm. and we make it in the oven in muffin tins. Another one might be the French fries that you put on top of your Uh the yellow split pea stew. So maybe you bake your French fries or you make them in the air fryer. There's lots of little shortcuts that you can do. Great. Thank you so much, Mita June. I look forward to continuing our conversations about Nooruz in the future episodes. Yes, this was fun. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. 
that you've been listening to Modern Persian Food with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling your friends or giving us a good rating on iTunes. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com for recipes and info that we talked about today. Thanks so much. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time. Thank you.